Good day everyone, this is Damares Photography and today we're going to be doing face retouching. Yeah, this is going to be a high-end tutorial, a beauty retouch, you get? So I'm going to just be teaching you how we can retouch the face to give you the perfect, perfect, perfect skin. So, if you've not subscribed to my tutorial, if you've not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. Yes, please do subscribe. That's the only way you support me, guys. This is the only way you support me. So don't forget to subscribe right now. Just click on the subscribe button. Okay. Okay, let's go to into the tutorial so first things first as you can see my image is a smart object right now my image is a smart object so the first thing i'm going to do is crop this image i like to crop my images while they're smart objects you get this is so that i don't reduce the quality of the image so right now i'm going to crop this image okay let's move it up B. okay i like that okay so i'm going to click on okay so if you can see this image has a lot of spots on it i what do you call it my lens was not clean and my sensor had the problem while i was shooting this image i didn't notice so we're going to need to clean up all those spots so first things first i'm going to flatten this image then i'm going to click on ctrl j so first things first i like normally i like separating the background from the subject and same you get but the first thing i'm going to do for this image before doing that is try to clean up this so for this i'm going to use uh i'm going to use this healing brush tool yes i'm going to use the healing brush tool or spot healing let's use spot healing brush so i'm just going to go through it and then just clean up clean up those uh the stops okay so i'm not trying to get the perfect perfect clean for the um, background because i know i'm also i'm still going to blow out the background later still going to blow out the background later but for now i just want a uh, sort of a uh, just remove those basic stuffs there you get okay i think i should go and use my patch tool i prefer using the patch tool yes yeah, so i'm just going to use the patch tool to clean up So as you can see before, after, before, after, as you can see we've been able to try to remove a lot of things from the skin. I tried not to, I tried not to remove scars from the skin or, or really, really big um, spots from the skin. Reason why is we could do that in frequency separation one and also for scars, the modem I just love the scars. For this one I didn't remove the scars. I didn't ask the model and I feel it makes her beautiful, it makes her unique. So I decided not to touch the scars. You get if you need to touch the scars, ask your model first. Okay, so we've done what we need to do for skin cleanup. Next thing we need to separate the background from the we need to separate the background from the image and same thing for the image from the background so that we could clean up the background. So first things first, I'm going to go to select subject. I'll just go to my properties and click on select subject. Okay, Photoshop has done job, but it usually is not that clean, so we would have to clean it up a bit. So as you can see, it's not clean here, and I think for other places, we'll just have to go through the image and see how clean Photoshop has done the job. Again, so 
what I'm going to use to complete my uh, what they call my image selection, I use the quick marks in edit mode. This allows me to use the brush tool to select subjects. But if you know how to use the pen tool or lasso tool, the quick uh, uh, what they call the quick selection tool, just use any tool you know how to use to do selections to complete your selection. For me, I'm going to use the edit in quick marks mode. I'm just going to use that. I select that and then I'll pick the brush. You use blacks to paint out of the selection. I use, I mean, use blacks to paint into the selection, to add selections and use white to paint out. So right now, I mean, yeah. So right now I'm painting, this place was not added to the selection. So I'm just going to, I'm going to paint the side now. So I think that's good, that's good for this, okay, I think I'm having some spots inside this, let's see, okay, that's good for the drivers there, so let's go through the top of the image, let's make sure we have a clean, clean, clean stuff there, okay, I'm having some issues with the side, so that's how you just I need to go around the image and then just check it because Photoshop really usually makes some little bits of errors. So you just need to go around the image and make sure your selection is as top notch is okay. So right now we've made our selection. Next thing we're going to do is click on Ctrl J. By clicking on Ctrl J right now, as you can see, I've been able to separate the image from the background. Right now, also, I want to separate the background from the image. So what I'm going to do is click on Control and click on that um, selection, on that um, first layer. And then I'll go back to the second layer and click and go to my lasso tool, right click and click on Select Inverse. By selecting Inverse, I've been able to select the background of the image. Then I'll click on Control J. So right now I have just a clean background. I have a selection of just the clean background. So this is the layer we're going to be working on the background, cleaning up the background. So first things first, I'll click on Ctrl J because I don't want to work destructively. I'm trying to work non-destructively. So if I make a mistake, I can just delete this layer and I'll still have this one underneath it. So first things first, I'm going to blow this. So I'm going to go to filter, blow, Gaussian blow. So normally I like giving my blow about 120. You can just play with it and see how much you want to blow your image. But for me, I leave it at 120. So this is 120. It's okay. One thing again I do for my after applying the blow is give my um what they call it, um, my background a bit of noise. Uh yes, I give it a bit of green. The reason why is if I save my image after editing everything and I left and I leave the background like this without adding greens to it we'll start experiencing some bandings in the image so i don't want to experience that so what i'm going to do is go to filter go to camera raw and give my background some um, some greens this is to give texture to the image you get without this is look at my background without without the greens if i go now and give it a green of let's say 25 which i like doing you see now i've given that background sort of a te texture so i'm not going to be having bands light bands on my image after after i've exported it after i've exported it as jpeg you get so click on ok i have that for my for my background then i think that's all for background right now so i just have to create a clipping marks and then merge that so as you can see this is our image went from before after before after so all this i'm just going to put that then into one folder and name that background so for me i would advise you anytime you're doing uh, what they call a, 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 a high-end retouching and especially when it's in a studio make sure if your background was not clean make sure you clean it up if the skin too if you need to clean some things clean it up too before you go to frequency separation it will make your work easier it's not everything frequency separation would be able to clean and then again it's better for you to do some of those things using the last the um patch tool or the healing brush tool clean up those small small spots and then you can go into the um after your frequency separation you can 
use a clone where before you frequency pressure that is when you apply your frequency pressure you can use a clone stamp to clean up the hard ones so right now i'm going to create a smart object i'm going into the frequent into the frequency separation technique so i'm going to make a smart object of all this by clicking on ctrl or shift ctrl shift e what we call a smart object is a match a, a layer that matches everything you've done beneath it without deleting those layers beneath it if you see if i off every other thing and just leave that smart object you see there's still no change to my image this is because this layer this um, smart object has everything i've worked on even if i own this beneath layer and still off my frequency pressure there'll still be no change so right now i'm also going to click on ctrl j for the first layer i'll name that low which is my low frequency layer and then i name this one high then i'm going to put both of them into one folder and name that fx which is frequency so the high frequency layer will be my texture layer and then my low frequency my low layer will be my color layer this is the, the color layer is where you'll be using the mixer brush tool to blend transitions on the skin for me frequency pressure is used to blend transitions you're make, trying to make all the transitions as smooth as possible you get that's all the transitions you want them to blend okay so for the high frequency layer that's where you use your clone stamp to clean up the image so first things first we off the high frequency layer we'll zoom into our image zoom into our image we'll make sure we are on the low low layer go to filter normally some people use gaussian blur for frequency separation but i prefer to use the, the median so i'll go to noise and then i'll go to median i prefer to use the median it makes sure that the lines are not too smooth you get on like gaussian blow make sure the lines are not too artificial you get so right now depending on your image will determine the radius you're going to be using for your median but i like to use from 8 to 14 yes from 8 to 14 so let's move and see okay for this image I think I can go higher or oh, what? Let me see. Okay, so I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see if 10 is too much or too low. Let me take it to 8. Let's see. Okay, let's take it to. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave it at 11 for this image. Okay, so I left that at 11. Then I'm going to go to my high layer. So I'm going to go to my high layer. And then I'm going to on that. On that, then I'm going to go to image. I'll go to apply. Apply image. I'll make sure my layer is on low. Make sure my layer is on low. Make sure my blending is on subtract. Make sure the opacity is 100. Scale is at 2. Offset is at 128. And then click on OK. So change the blend mode to linear light. So this is off. This is a technique for frequency separation. So right now, what you have to do is first of all, open you zoom into the image and see if there are still things you want to clean up. Make sure you're on the high layer click on your clone stamp make sure your opacity is at 100 your flow is at 15 and then just go to the image and see if there are some things you still want to clean up you are you should do this before you start your your frequency separation and that is before you start using the brush tool to blend so i'm just going to go through the image and then just see if there are some things i still want to clean up and then i just have to just clean them up So next thing I'm going to go to the color layer and then I'll pick my mixer brush tool. For this mixer brush tool, I'm going to make sure, first of all, make sure you're on a clean brush. Make sure your weights, I like using leaving my weight from around 15 to 25. Most times I work on 15, you get. 
I want to keep my skin as natural as possible. So load for 30, max on 30, flow on 30. Okay, so let's start off. Like I said, what we're trying to do with the mixer brush tool is to blend light and shadows. You have to be careful so you don't spoil the contour of your image. Also, you have to just, just be careful that you don't spoil the contour of your image again. So we're just trying to go through image and then just blend lights to shadows again. So as you can see before after before after see how we made the transition smoother from light to shadows you see how we made the transition smoother so that's what we're trying to do with you doing frequency separation so that's the frequency separation technique next thing we can just apply the dodge and burn yes we can just apply the dodge and burn so to apply dodge and burn just go to curves you have one low curve one up one down the one down you name that burn and then you would take it down in it. And just take it down a bit. And click on Ctrl I to invert it. Same thing here, take this one up. Aim that on, I mean, dodge. Same thing, click on control high, to invert it. You can see we have the dodge and then we have the burn. Put burn then put into one folder. I mean, that DB dodge and burn. So what I'm going to do, be doing with my dodge and bond is just to highlight some parts. I'm not going to be doing full dodge and bond. You get. So what I'm going, to, just going to do is I'm just going to pick my brush tool, make sure my upper is at hundred and my flow is at five. Then I'm going to dodge and bond some parts I feel I want to highlight. You get. So right now for the, I'm going to off my frequency separation layer. So first things first, I want to highlight my those blushes. I want to bring pop them out. You get. So I just want to highlight those blushes. So I'm going to burn that part. Again, I'm just going trying to bring out the contour around this edge of the face. As you can see before, after, before, after. Another thing I'm going to do is I want to highlight this eyes. I want to highlight this eyes. That is the lashes. I want to highlight it. So I'm going to burn it. Same thing for here. I'm going to burn the lashes. This is just to give more attraction to the eyes. So anybody that looks at the image, first thing they notice is the eyes we draw them into the image, you get? So another thing I'm going to do is the nose. First thing I'm going to burn and dodge the middle of the nose. And then I'm going to burn this part. So I'm just going to, like I, this is just to, this is all to be able to alight you get just to give detail to the image you get so if you can see before after before after if i on the frequency separation you see the difference before after before after you get so i'm trying to just contour the eyes you get and contour the face so i'm going to off that back and then i'm going to go through just going to go through i'm going to bond this part just going through the image like i said i just want to highlight some parts not everything do i don't think i want to do anything else yeah so let me on that so we have before after before after next thing i want to bring detail into the pupil but i have to use 
the layer mask so i'm going to go to new layer new layer go to pick the mode to soft light make sure you click on fill with soft light 50 neutral color 50 percent gray and click on ok also so this layer i could also have used it to do i could have used it to do what i just did with the um dodge and bond tool but I just decided to show you guys how you could use that one to do dodge and burn. This one too is another thing you could use to do dodge and burn. But if you're using this one, you have to make sure your flow is at 1%. And then anytime you want to dodge, use the use the whites to dodge, use the blacks to burn. So right now I'm just going to zoom into the eyes. I'm going to use the eyes. I like I said, I want to give the eyes some detail. I want to bring out some detail in the eyes. So what I'm going to do is this. As you can see, before, after, before, after. Last but not the least for this face retouching tutorial, I'm also going to whiten the, the eyes. I'm going to whiten the eyes and the teeth. So I have an action pack that I do use. I'm going to put that in the description below so you could just download it to get. So for this action pack, I'm just going to click on it. And I'll open it, I'll go to photo filter. Here that is same photo filter, I'm going to change that the feel of that to 70%. If you love it at 100%, you could use it. I prefer that 50 70%. Make sure your flow and opacity is at 100 and then just paint using the white brush. You can also use a black brush to clean up. Okay, I think for this, my model's eyes, I'm going to change it to 100. Yes, for her eyes, I'm changing it to 100. Her eyes is a bit quite, a bit red. So. Okay, so I'm also going to do that for the teeth. I'm going to use blocks to clean up. Okay, so that's all for face retouching. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to subscribe. I think I've given you guys a good, a bit of usable, very, very good usable knowledge, yeah? before after before after so please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and i'll see you in the next tutorial have a wonderful day guys